are live here, finally. Yay! After so much chaos, but it finally works. So, um, hello everybody watching, all of you awesome astrology lovers out there. Um, finally going to get back to this Rising Sign series I've wanted to finish forever. And I have the honor of having the awesome Sarah Miller Astrology with me today. And uh, yeah, like she kind of reached out to me um, pretty early on in my channel and I was like, oh yes, this awesome astrologer is taking me under her wing. So I was like, I need to bring her on and connect here. Well, awesome. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm really yes. excited. Me too. Um, and I think that's the first thing before I even knew you were a Leo rising, you um, just kind of the way you approached me when you emailed me, you just had this so excited energy and super charismatic and just um, that big, uh, that Leo love, you know, like I just, I felt that instantly from you. That's awesome. Yes. So um, between you, I have, uh, you're the fourth Leo rising I know now. Three of my best friends are Leo ascendants and they're just some of the most awesome people I've ever met in my life. And just have a super great time with them. So from your perspective, just let us know, like, um, like, what's your favorite quality of Leo rising, your least favorite, and what's it like to be one? Um, well, my favorite thing about my Leo rising is just my huge personality. Like, I'm constantly just, like, super dramatic about everything. And if I'm happy, I wear it on my sleeve, and I just try and make everyone else in the room happy with me. Uh, my least favorite thing about it is also that same thing because I annoy a lot of people. I feel like because I'm so dramatic and so like over the top with my happiness and enthusiasm level that people just kind of can't handle it at sometimes. And they think I'm like trying to be like kind of like an attention whore, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to like get everybody up to my level, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's really intense being a Leo rising because with all those, you know, emotions right out there on the front line, just kind of like, you know, that fire kind of thing. When you when you wear it like a coat, it, it just kind of like radiates all around you. And it's, it's very exciting. It's very dynamic. Um, yeah, I like it. <laughs> oh, awesome. And I love that line you just kind of put out there um, when you wear it like a coat, because uh, obviously, you know, Leo being represented by the lion energy and stuff. Um, it just sounds perfect for a Leo rising. Uh, we need to like quote that and put it in some book or something. Quote Sarah <laughs> Miller there. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh man, but I can imagine, you know, because personally, I, I love that, you know, the Leo risings have, when you first meet them, this extravagance about them. But I guess people who, maybe are more reserved and um, I guess more chill acts and kind of be like, ah, uh, but I'm not like that at all. So I personally love it and I embrace it all the time. So that's awesome, awesome. Um, something that's always interested me is that like, I've always kind of seen Leo is like the brightest light of all the zodiac signs and Scorpio is like the darkest shadow. So like Leo to me is one of the most powerful of them all. It's like the sun, you know, and, it's just got, um, it's so bright. What, what are your thoughts on that? Like, would you agree with that? Yes, I definitely agree. I mean, the sun lights up our entire world. You know, it is the brightest light that we see. And definitely, Leos definitely have that optimism about them that can make everyone else around them happy and make them feel that light as well. Exactly. Like, and how, something I was thinking about, because, you know, Leo energy typically really wants to do that, just wants everyone around them to be happy, wants to join everyone in on the circle. Um, but they typically want to be included in on that, too, and be seen and be recognized for their efforts. Like, do you ever battle with that, like, feeling like you try really hard with people, but you don't always get back what you give? It's a constant struggle with that. It's it's really frustrating at times because I know I don't need to be the center of attention, but I feel like I need to be like it's it's weird. It's definitely like a, a juggling act like I need to I had to learn how to teach myself when to step back and when to let other people have recognition. Uh, when I was younger, it used to be a big thing of mine when someone else would get recognition. I would jump in and start applauding them but I would be so loud and obnoxious about it where all the attention was diverted to me. <laughs> so I've really had to learn to 
take a step back and just really chill out and learn to let other people have their moment. Uh, and, see, that's, that's perfect. And it's not like I'm trying to steal their thunder or anything. I just get so excited. Exactly. It's like, it's a joyous excitement. That's how I've always seen it. My sister's a Leo, so she's a lot like that. And, um, you know, she just wants everyone to be happy, but she's always told me, I just want them to include me in that happiness and, you know, show me that they care too. And to just let me be in the middle. Cause I love them that much. You know, it's just, that's the way it should be. <laughs> yes. Oh, you go, Hannah. But um, yeah, that's another thing, you know, just speaking of being in the middle and all of that, there's a lot of stereotypes in astrology towards Leo that they're egotistical and have, you know, ego inflation and that everything has to be about them. I, I don't personally see that very much, like, since I'm probably a little biased because it's probably my top three favorite signs, but I've always seen Aries as more of that energy, personally. I don't do very well with Aries energy. More times than not, not always, but kind of depending on where you find it. Um, but, and that's why I love that series you just did about like the ego sign and like the spirit side of it too. Would you say, do you like agree with that stereotype or do you feel like that's a misconception because people are jealous of the Leo energy? Uh, I wouldn't say jealous, uh, but I feel that. Leo ascendants have a very strong personality and we're not afraid to just like put ourselves right out there on the front lines where people who are more reserved, who are craving the spotlight, but just don't have that energy to put themselves out there. I feel like they may get a little like perturbed that it's so easy for us Leo ascendants to do that. So they might kind of like think, Oh wow, look at her. She's so cocky and full of herself. And it's really just not, I'm just really outgoing. Exactly. It's just, um, would you say it's like a confidence in a way? Yes. Yeah, definitely a confidence. Uh, not afraid to assert yourself. That's definitely one of my favorite things, you know, because, um, yeah, I'm sure there are the, the ego Leos out there. Um, we've all seen it, but I see it as confidence and like they just have this drive to keep going and going and going and to be seen for those efforts. And it's like, it takes a lot to knock a Leo person down. Like, does that stand true for you? Do you feel like you have a really strong sense of willpower to keep going no matter what people think of you? I do for the most part. Uh, I do have a really hard time with criticism. Like lately, internet people are just really mean to me all of a sudden, I feel like. Oh. And it's always like a huge blow right at first when I see like some sort of negative comment. I kind of want to like cry a little bit. But then I get up faster. You know, I'm just like, oh, whatever. Hater is going to hate. You need to give me the names of these people, Sarah. I'm going to have to go hunt some people down for you. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot be having this on YouTube. Uh -uh. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. The haters are going to hate for sure. And um, it's hard because, you know, when you're putting yourself out there in the world, like, you know, you just you want approval. You want people to. Um, even if they don't agree with everything you're putting out to at least just be respectful, but some people gonna hate no matter what. Um, we in the age of Aquarius now, everyone's sharing themselves online and it's inevitable, but it's hard, you know? Yeah. Plus I kind of feel like, you know, like why, are, why do you hate me? I'm, I'm just saying things. I'm just saying my opinion on things, you know, why you gotta hate on me like that? <laughs> I don't know. It's like the internet is like the one place a lot of insecure people just hate on someone just to feel better about themselves. I swear. That's like the only reason they'd be doing it. Yeah. I'm starting to feel that way as well. But uh, So let's see. We covered all of that good stuff. Now, I've always, everyone's interpretation is a little bit different of the ascendant. Like some people say it's just the mask you wear to the world which it is kind of that, but I think it goes a little bit deeper just because if all of the other houses don't get the interpretation of getting to wear a mask, then why does only the first house get to have that? You know, I kind of feel like the sun sign is in a way kind of your inheritance from your dad and that your moon is kind of your inheritance from your mom and that the ascendant is kind of what you chose to incarnate in this life too. And some people agree with that. Some people don't, but, um, depending really on what like you that. think of that. Yeah, me too. Cause I was like, it's something that's, it's the ascendance more personal to you. And like, 
at that exact moment of birth that you decided to come and say hello to the world and you did it in the best way possible with this Leah like hey world here I am <laughs> get ready for the show um, <laughs> Like, what would you say on a soul level, being a, a Leo Ascendant is like, like at the spiritual level, how that's affected your life? Um, well, I know as a kid, I was a really big handful. Like, my mom and my grandma were just buried in my whole thing. I had to be star of the show, center of attention 24-7. And if I wasn't, I just wasn't having any of it. And then... Uh, during my like teenage years, I kind of like sank back into my shell and just kind of like sulked into my Scorpio energy, just kind of like watched. And now that I'm in my 20s, I've just kind of really learned to like balance the two out and I know when to take a step back and then I know when to be flamboyant and flaunt my shit, <laughs> pretty much. Share it all over the place. Well, hey, that's great. We got to keep our grandparents and our parents on their toes as kids. So you did a good job of that. That's our job here. <laughs> oh, boy. But, um, yeah, well, that's awesome because, you know, I do feel that um, on that soulful level, the Leo has that super bright light. So especially as a kid, I did find that I experienced my ascendant a lot when I was a child. And then as I got older, you know, um, when I was a teenager, I experienced more of my moon sign. And now that I'm in my 20s as well, it's kind of a mixture of all of them. And you learn to integrate and assimilate it all together. Yes. And I, I've also been told uh, by a few of my really close friends that when I walk into a room, I really just light it up. And I really think that's my Leo ascendant. Yeah, I, I can see it too, like even just on this hangout, like instantly, I, it was just like, boom, lights all around. I love that. So speaking of like light now, I know um, we're talking more about the uh, rising, but since the sun is so representative of Leo, I know you have your sun uh, conjunct Venus. I was just really curious about that. That was one of my favorite aspects in your chart. Do you find that that kind of is like a mixture of blending the sun Leo energy with Venus and uh, kind of bringing like a Librian feel into it. Like that's how has it been for you with that? Uh, yeah, I, with that, I'm, it adds to my Leo bubbliness and outgoingness and I'm just really happy and bubbly all the time. And I'm constantly trying to make others happy um, to the point where it can be a little detrimental to myself because I do a lot of like sacrificing to make others happy. Um, but it definitely adds kind of like that peacekeeping quality that Libra has. And in Vedic astrology, my moon is in Libra. Woo. So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely have that like natural peacekeeping ability. Like I can't stand to see people fighting or arguing. I'm always the first person to jump in and be like, dude, stop. <laughs> I know this is not right. Got to be the mediator. Yep. Uh, sweetness yeah that was just it stood out to me when I was looking through your aspects I was like oh man that's got to be such a pleasant and just nice bubbly upbeat energy to have there it really is plus in the sixth house like that really works out to my advantage oh yeah I would definitely imagine because um so your son's in the sixth house yeah okay sweet so actually let's talk about that so um the sun is going to be super important for you as a Leo rising since the sun is ruling over your chart. So you're a Capricorn and it's in the sixth house. What's what's that experience been like? Uh, I started working at a really, really young age. Like I, I, when I was 16, I got my first job. Uh, for a few years, I ended up going to school full time and working full time. And I feel like my entire life since I turned 16 has been nothing but work. And it's kind of like a, I, I always feel like I'm extremely busy. I'm always doing something, uh, whether it be to make money or to help someone out. I get very few moments to myself. Hey, what is it they say about Capricorn? It's like that constantly climbing up the ladder and um, the eternal hard worker. I mean, and that's interesting to me because you've got a lot of Capricorn in your chart. Like, holy moly. I was like, whew. This girl has got to be a hard worker. Just constantly <laughs> going, going. Um, what's interesting is that, you know, Leo is, you know, it's such a flamboyant out there energy and Capricorn 
being earth is a lot more stable and grounded and you know practical do you find that it's kind of a war between those two sides or that one dominates more than the other or how does that kind of pan out all the time all the time i really try to incorporate my leo personality into all my work um but then again i also have to battle between like not getting too much leo thrown in there otherwise i won't get anything done ever <laughs> and i also feel that with that energy like i really have to be doing something that i love otherwise i'm not going to really care that much about it i'm really just in it to make money at that point and that's where i kind of completely lose interest and start slacking off yeah it definitely sounds like your heart's got to be in it yes me oh my yeah, because I saw, I was like, gosh, just from, from what I feel with you, like, I see the Capricorn there, no doubt about it, but I definitely feel, I feel the Leo a lot more, but then I was like, there's so much of that Capricorn energy, and then it shows up in the sixth house, so um, how is that like? Does it take on a Virgoan type quality with that, or is that kind of, you just feel where it's showing up? Um, I definitely feel at times like I do have some Virgo energy just because I can be really, really nitpicky at times and really critical more so onto myself. Um, but yeah, I, plus my son's in the third decan, the Virgo decan. So there is a lot of like analytical nonsense that goes, goes on behind the scenes and I, I've just always really respected Virgos. Virgos I've always gotten along with famously. I don't think I've ever met a Virgo that I didn't like. <laughs> oh, well, that makes me feel a little bit better because, oh, my gosh, I do not get along with other Virgos at all. It's so bad. Really? Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's just like a reflection of myself or something. I'm like, oh, gosh, am I acting this neurotic all the time? Or I don't know. It's... Um, I find the ones in my life are typically the lower octave, just really bitchy and nitpicky and judgmental. And I can't stand that. Like the more laid back Virgos that, you know, can kind of balance themselves out with their Pisces opposition and be a little more carefree. Um, I do pretty well with, but uh, I love Capricorn energy though. Um, my son is in the 10th house. So um, that's kind of funny. So you're a cap with son of the six and then I'm a, Virgo with Son of the Tenth, so we've kind of got that uh, mutual reception there. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Uh, definitely, like you said, the hardworking qualities with Capricorn. Um, I love to work and throw myself into everything and try to keep uh, the monkey mind of the Virgo down <laughs> <laughs> the best that I can. But us but, Earth um, signs, they're just really hard on ourselves in general. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that. It's like, because usually when that energy is being directed out to people, I always tell them, think about how they're actually treating themselves inside. Mm -hmm. That's where it really shows up. But so something I was also thinking about um, is that, you know, you have five planets in the fifth house and already being this Leo rising, do you feel like having such a house explosion, basically? It's like you've got a lot of people living in that house. Um, does that amplify the ascendant at all? Yes, I have my Mars and Sagittarius, which is trying my ascendant. Plus, I have Neptune, uh, Mercury. I'm drawing a blank right here. Neptune, Mercury, and Uranus there as well. And honestly, I feel like it just really makes my ascendant pop. Like, I have so much creative energy, and my thoughts are constantly moving. It's crazy. And I just feel like I really over exaggerate everything. I make everything like it should be a play. And <laughs> it, it really is just like, I feel like I'm a closet Leo. That's what's happened. You are a past life closet Leo, so Sarah. We have yes. officially figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> it is out there, no going back. Um, yeah. I do find, because I mean, everyone kind of has a different interpretation of the fifth house. Um, some people say it's a lot about, you know, that childlike quality in us and then, you know, the really creative energy and art and things like that. Do you have any creative endeavors that you're really into that kind of stem from that? So many. <laughs> They're all like phases in my life, I feel like. Um, when I was younger, I got really, really into drawing and I was going to go to college for it, but I decided to bail out on that. 
and then I got really into uh, music and singing, playing guitar, which that really fizzled out. And then now I'm all about writing. Ooh, boot to the writing. <laughs> I love it. And that uh, would make sense because you've got Mercury in the fifth house, right? Yes. Oh, and wow. It's a close conjunction with Neptune as well. And I'm really all about writing like fantasy. Like oh, I'd love it. to just throw myself into my writing and just pretend that I'm in like some crazy fantasy world. Woo, I cannot wait to hear some of this because um, I'm a writer myself, so I love to read other people's work. But that's got to be some really creative juices flowing. Like anytime, yeah, I've seen Mercury in the fifth house, some of the best writers out there. Awesome. Yeah. And I forgot, your Mercury is in the 11th house? Yes, in the 11th house in Libra. So that's got to give you like a really like crazy, like artistic flow to your writing. Yeah, it definitely has helped with that. Um, I When I was in uh, high school, I went to a art school for writing, and um, I definitely felt that. It's that very, you know, diplomatic writing, very um, uh, very Venusian, you know, tends to flow through very well. And um, being in the 11th house, I like to share it, and uh, it definitely does help. I love the Libra energy. It definitely fizzles out the Scorpio a little bit, and because uh, I have Mars there as well, and uh, Jupiter. Um, yeah, without it, I, I'd probably go a little bit cray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too much. <laughs> so, I was thinking, um, you know, we could have gone through all the houses, but maybe just go through, like, the four most important ones, like the angles of the chart. So, we've talked about being a Leo rising, obviously having Leo on your first house. Um, the IC in the fourth house cusp is, like, super important to me. Like, a lot of people overlook this in the chart, but I think it just gives such an insight, you know, being at the very bottom into like where you are internally and kind of um, the well that kind of springs forth in you spiritually and emotionally. And so you've got that in Scorpio. So that's like, that's really big. What what would that be like? Uh, well, I completely agree with what you say. I love looking at the IC in a birth chart. Um, Having not only my moon in Scorpio, but Scorpio on my IC with Pluto there in the fourth house, it's really, really intense. And it really adds to my Leo dramatics because whenever like, I feel some emotion, not only is it intensified by my Scorpio moon, but it's really brought to the surface with my, Scorpio, or with my Leo ascendant. Um, but it's, it's very intense. I feel like I feel things like on a visceral level. Whenever I get mad or happy or sad, like, it just kind of, like, I can feel it on the inside. Like, it almost causes me pain when I get sad. Mm. And everything I feel is very important to me. Like, experiences, I really hold on to those. And I'm also a pack rat. Like, I can't get rid of anything ever. <laughs> Holding on to it all, huh? Yes. Oh, um. And, and that also pertains a lot to childhood. And with Scorpio there, I feel like I kind of had to be an adult as a child. But now that I'm an adult, I can kind of be a child. So I love that kind of flip flops. Yeah. So I was, I'm curious too about on your IC there with Scorpio being there. They say this a lot with the Scorpio moon in general, but also the IC um, that there's a lot of, you know, how it relates to your mother and your relationship with her and everything. Does it stand to be true for you? If you don't mind going here, that um, like what your relationship with your mom has been like, kind of just to give us an idea for the other ones out there. Because there is definitely a lot that goes around out there that anyone with this I see like had this horrible relationship with their mom. Oh, yeah, it's totally true. <laughs> Right out we, there. We have had a lot of power struggles. We've had a lot of fights. Uh, there's been a lot of manipulation there. It's just been a very, what the relationship with my mother has always been walking like a fine line between like not pissing each other off. Because the second we piss each other off, it's like all over. And we'll That's fight fun. for like three years. Oh, no. And you have, what, Mars and Sagittarius, right? Yes. Oh, so a fire sign Mars. We don't want to piss her off. <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah, it, it's pretty bad. 
Oh, yeah, I was curious there just with that IC because, you know, pretty much every Scorpio moon I've talked to and people that have the Scorpio IC with having their Leo ascendant, if their chart lines up that way, they all have this experience with their mom. And I'm wondering if I'm ever going to meet one that hasn't. So the trend just keeps continuing here. Yeah, I, I've never met a Scorpio moon or Scorpio IC that hasn't had a, a troubleful relationship with their mother. Uh, until that day. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see next we I guess we'll uh, go to the descendant the seventh house and um so for you that'd be an Aquarius opposite your ascendant um, do you find that you attract a lot of Aquarius energy into your life and that it's kind of um, you get that mirroring effect you know when you get those oppositions there like uh, how has that been for you uh, there are a lot of Aquarians in my life they're everywhere. Like half the people I work with are Aquarians. Uh, some of my close friends are Aquarians and they're everywhere in my life. I feel like I'm constantly having to interact with them. And I, I find it personally, I find it very difficult to get along with them just because we're on two completely different wavelengths. Um, but in my relationships, I feel that my partners really take on like an Aquarian type uh, personality uh, not necessarily that they are Aquarians but they definitely become like aloof or very interested in uh, uh, certain hobbies such as writing or um, involving large groups of people like uh, sponsoring uh, uh, I can't talk right now I can't. we're getting the fundraisers that's what I'm looking for like um, my ex was really into, uh, the music industry and he was constantly like throwing on fundraisers to raise money for this charity, this charity and that. Um, and yeah, all of them are just pretty outgoing with the community. Woo, yep. Got that Aquarian energy. It's definitely a force not to be reckoned with. Um, it's fixed, you know, just like Leo. So I find the fixed signs, you know, when they come into their, um, opposing in like for me with the Scorpio ascendant when I come into the Taurus energy for my descendant it can kind of be a uh, it there's a lot of clashing there but it balances me out at the same time but uh it can be interesting to say the least yeah and I, I agree with that I definitely need Aquarians in my life just to kind of keep me from going too overboard with my dramatics it's like, I guess Aquarius does, they kind of have their dramatics too, but in a completely different way. Like they really want to be seen for all this cool technology stuff or not necessarily technology, but um, these grand scheme ideas that they get, they're just so far ball out there, you know, and it's so different than the Leo in a completely more eccentric way, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, awesome. So what about uh, the Midheaven? You have Taurus there, which is super interesting to me. I think that's uh, that's like got to be a pretty hard worker there and someone that's really um, putting out uh, what they're doing kind of in the work field. How has that affected your life? Uh, yeah, um, like in my day job, I feel like its influence is the heaviest because I really have a lot of crazy emotions going on with my all my Scorpio energy going on but I don't really portray that at work at all and people think I'm having like the greatest day of my life and just like completely busting my ass when I'm just like trying to skate by because I like feel like crying or I feel like yelling at someone <laughs> and I feel like it almost gives me a lot of like recognition that I feel I don't deserve because <laughs> I'm just like I don't know I think my views on myself are very skewed in that aspect, just because the dynamic between Scorpio and Taurus is so intense. Yeah, but, that's, they definitely have that going. Because I would imagine, like what you're saying, you could probably be seen as like the person at work that's just super calm, line and stable that everyone would be coming to and be like, "Oh, Sarah, you've got it all together. Help me." <laughs> Meanwhile, on the inside, I'm like, I don't know what life is. <laughs> I know, like. That's what's so funny to me is that, you know, the Scorpio energy, we, you, you feel it inwardly so much, but people don't always see it, surprisingly. It's like, if they could, I wonder what they would think. Yeah, no kidding. God, it'd be uh, like a thunderstorm. 
<laughs> definitely a very intense dynamic there. Oh, geez, Louise, yeah. Um, so those are pretty much the four really important points in the chart that I find. Now, if any of the houses that you have um, cussed, are there any of them that really stand out to you that you think are important to go over? Um, I feel like my third house is really influential. Like just the third house in general. I think it gets overlooked a lot. Um, but with my moon there and everything, definitely adds another layer of, of drama to the way I express myself. Because sometimes I find myself just like rambling on and I cannot stop talking. And then I realize I'm talking about something like really like macabre or inappropriate <laughs> that it's like really offending a lot of people. And I just kind of like can't stop. <laughs> I just keep talking, kind of like I'm doing right now. Oh, like, do you think, do you find it's pretty emotionally expressive since your moon is there? Yes, it is. Um, but I also find myself, like, stumbling over my words a lot. And that also has to do with, like, my Mercury in the fifth house being sandwiched by Uranus and Neptune. Um, but also with it in the third house, I feel that Scorpio moons aren't able to express themselves very well, uh, that are our whole thought process is just feelings and not words. So we have to kind of like translate them as we're feeling these emotions. So it all just kind of comes out as like word vomit. <laughs> oh boy. Like this mush. How do we, how do we put this into words? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh boy. So um, sign wise, let's see, you're Leo rising. So would that be Libra? Ruling yeah. the third house? Okay, cool, cool. So that makes a lot of sense because your communication style of notes is very, it's very sweet, good demeanor and super expressive, but also like considerate and everything. So it's got that, uh, that Venus kiss. Yes, I'm always afraid I'm going to offend people. I think that's one of like, like my biggest fears is like making someone feel offended or like hurt. Oh God, I know. I feel you too. It's it's weird because you know the Scorpio energy is so it's so direct in one way, but then when you have those Libra influences or other things, you know, like Sun conjunct Venus, it's like, uh, I also don't want to step on any toes. Yes. So, but so let's see. Is there any other big uh, factors to being a Leo rising? And Leo rising is very big, extravagant. Um that do you think are important to kind of throw out there for us? Um, yes, actually. Um, I feel like it's important for Leo Senate, Leo ascendants because from my personal experience, uh, those who have their uh, ascendant in Leo tend to be like the party girls of the Zodiac, kind of like really overindulgent when it comes to like partying, being the center of attention, getting really drunk. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of like, learn to stray away from that kind of thing because not only do you have Scorpio on your fourth house cusp, but you also have Pisces on your eighth house cusp and Cancer on your 12th house cusp. So you have all these water signs in their, you know, water homes and that can really lead to like a lot of like addictive behaviors. Um, mm -hmm. Especially with Pisces in the eighth, you know, that obsession with like the unknown side of life. So you really want to like, go full force into it. So yeah, don't drown in all that water over there. Yeah. <laughs> God, it can feel that way some days, I bet. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, once it's like, that's the thing about any water influence on the houses or sign-wise, like, it's like when you're, when you're floating on top of the water, it's good, you know, it's a good time. It's when life gets crazy and you start drowning under there, it's like, ah, Leo Ascendant, save me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, thank God for fire in that regard. Like I find, and that's, you know, um, as we get to the end here, this one thing I love about Leo so much is that no matter what is going on, like if I'm around a Leo influenced person, I am just automatically brought up. Like my mood just elevates like crazy. And it doesn't matter what happened, how bad my day was, you know, you're just around the life of the party and then it's all good. You know, I feel the same way about Sagittarius energy. Like, I've always been extremely drawn to Sagittarians, um, especially lunar Sagittarians. Like, you guys are just, you guys just have a way of just, like, picking me up and, like, it's okay, it's okay, we can have fun now. 
Keeping it upbeat, yeah. I, uh, I'm glad you say that. That's probably why we have a good camaraderie here, too. We both got some fire going on there. Um, yeah, Sag has always been one of my favorite ones. Like, I've always said with the Scorpio Rising that, honestly, if I did not have a Sag moon, oh, God, I would just – I'd be in a corner just crying my eyes out every day. Like, I just would not know what to do. <laughs> it saves me every time. Yes, I definitely call upon my Leo energy in that aspect, too, because with all my Scorpio and Capricorn, I can really just, like, sink into a shell of self-loathing, and oh. I really have to, like, use that fifth house and that Leo ascendant to kind of, like, pull me out of the house and, you know, feel those positive emotions. Well, pull us back into it. So, I mean, yeah, that's that says a lot all in itself about the Leo rising, you know, this powerhouse of just, like, strength and optimism and happiness in the spite of everything, you know, um, as, you, as we've talked about through the whole chart, you know, Leo rising is going to have their struggles, obviously, like any other with their other placements, but um, it is the light of the sun that's, you know, keeping it all going and um, really just assimilating the charts. Um, but one more important question, I don't think I asked this one, but what would you say the difference is between a Leo ascendant and a Leo sun sign? Um... I feel that the Leo Ascendant is more just like your outer persona. I kind of feel that Leo Ascendants are a little more outgoing than the Leo Sun sign. Uh, just because in, in my experience, all the Leo Suns I've had around me tend to be a little bit more withdrawn and tend to exert that Leo energy when they're more comfortable with the people around them, when they're more, you know, when they're, when they're well acquainted with their surroundings. And that's when that Leo really shines. And that Leo, like, I kind of get jealous of Leo sons because they have, like, a way more, like, positive outlook on life, more positive outer shell. Um, but I feel that Leo ascendants are just more outgoing in the now when they need to be. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, I kind of can definitely attest to that, too, because I do know some Leo sons that, like, one of the Leo sons I know has like a Virgo rising, I think. And he is such a shy person. Like you would never think he was a Leo being around him. But when you get to know him, like you see like, oh, okay, that's, there's the Leo. But um, like, obviously with you, it's just like right out there. There's no hiding that. Yeah. <laughs> like bamboo, yeah, bitches. Here yes. It is. <laughs> no matter how hard I try to be quiet, I just can't be. <laughs> Oh, just got to keep it communicating. I, I love it. So, um, oh my gosh, Sarah, this has been so awesome. Like already, I'm just smiling ear to ear in the presence of a Leo rising. This is what happens, you guys. Like go find one if you don't know one. It'll change your life. <laughs> well, thank you. That's so nice of you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much the Leo rising, the main points. And um, thank you for watching, everybody. And did you have any final comments, Sarah, or is that about feel wrapped up to you? Um, I think it feels wrapped up. All right. We'll awesome. definitely have to do this again. Oh, yeah, totally. This has been so much fun. Uh, our fire works well here in our Scorpio. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for tuning in to everybody, and happy transiting to you all.